G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm checking out the SkyTrack Plus with the PC version of the SkyTrack app. And I'm gonna be showing you everything that's involved with the PC version of the application. Spoiler alert, it doesn't really differ from what you get on the iPad version of the app, apart from the new course play, which I have heard is going to be on the iPad at some time, we don't know when, but course play is definitely something that's different on the PC version. Bringing up the PC version, the first thing I'll say is you can't do a custom resolution with the Skytrax uh, application. I, I didn't know how to do it, so what I've had to do is run it as a window and then fit that window to my computer, which I have a custom resolution on my computer. As soon as I try and go full screen, which gets rid of the taskbar, um, it doesn't fit my projector perfectly. So I'm running it in this view. That's the only way I could get it to fit my projector perfectly because I am running a custom resolution on my projector. Okay, looking into the PC version, you're gonna get the practice tab. This is literally the SkyTrack range as you had exactly the same in the application on the iPad. There's not much difference. Um, I'll jump into it now. You select your club, we'll go any club. Graphics wise, doesn't really look any different. It looks honestly the exact same. You do have an additional practice area though. So selecting practice area, you are gonna be able to jump in and go to some of these other practice areas. So you've got the SkyTrack range, you've got the wall, which is gonna be their shot shaping wall. You've got right to left command range, a left to right command range. You've got accuracy island. To be honest, I mean, are these groundbreaking, I mean, potentially. I like the wall, I do like the wall. Um, I think that's a really good idea. So what I'll do is I'll jump into that range now. And the idea of this is to really give you a visual to try and hit a draw or a fade or, you know, try and achieve something. So I do think this is a good idea. We'll select seven iron. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna give you something visually in your room to try and avoid if you're trying to shape a shot. So. I, I can see the merit in this. I think this is a good idea. So I'll grab a seven iron. And the main purpose of this, like I said, is to give you something to look at, to then go, okay, I wanna start my ball to the right. I've got something in my way. I really need to start this out to the right of the target. So I'm gonna aim right. I'm gonna close the face. The ball will start out right and it should be drawing back. Um, and so yeah, side spin, it's got left side spin. That, to me, I can see, there is merit in this range. Um, as you can see, the club path there, club face was a bit open, so we'll go again, and we'll try and get our club face a bit more closed relative to the path, and we should see a bit more of a draw. Okay, and that one there, that was a bit better. So if we look at that one, we had club path was five degrees to the right, and then the face relative, was uh, 1.7 degrees open to the target, but to the actual path, it was 3.5 degrees closed, producing more of that draw shot. So I do see merit in this, uh, the wall. Gives you something to visually look at and avoid. So we'll click on the practice area again. And I'm sure those practice areas will get added to the iPad um, application in the next update. It's just, they've updated this version first, and then they're gonna do the iPad at a later date. Uh, the other one you have is the city range, I mean, it gives you a different view, a different look. You're hitting balls in a city. To be honest though, I don't really, it, it, it's not gonna give you anything else to really do in there. It's just a different look for a driving range. The next tab you've got is Swing Lab. So we can click on that. And this is essentially the exact same that you get in the iPad application. It's just called Swing Lab. You've got your skills assessments, your bag mapping, and also your wedge matrix section. So it's essentially just been a rebranded section, um, but it's the same things you get in the iPad version of the application. Jumping into the challenges tab, again, this is the exact same as you get in the iPad version. I've given my thoughts on these. I, I just can't, for me, I guess potentially if you're gonna run an event, maybe I can see merit in this, but I just don't see the average home user using any of these. Um, but you do get these challenges uh, in the PC version as well. Coming soon, you are gonna have access to Pinseeker. This is pretty cool. So Pinseeker, I believe it originally started with E6 and it was it's basically a nearest the pin that you can go on there, you can play for real money or you can play for fake money. You can go on, 
pay to do a nearest the pin competition and win some money. So that's pretty cool. It's good to see it integrated. And yeah, I mean, if you wanna do a nearest the pin for some money, you've got that option coming soon. Finally, the big one. The big one is course play. This, I mean, this is huge for SkyTrack. And a lot of people, I've heard a lot of massive things about course play. I'm super excited to check out course play. I've heard big things. There's been some bold claims by some people about the course play. I mean, in regards to GS Pro, I've heard it's better than GS Pro. I've heard a lot of things. We'll see. I'm gonna put this through a full test and um, there's been some bold claims. There's been some very, very bold claims and I'm gonna put them to the test. So without further ado, let's jump in and play nine holes of Quail Hollow. We will jump into course play and there is Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach is obviously their, their marquee, their main one that they're trying to push on people. You've got to think, with all of these courses now, I'll just go back and jump to Pebble Beach straight away. With all of these courses, they're going to have to pay licenses to these courses. At the moment, there's 30. And if you look at the names of the courses, there's a couple of big ones like Pebble Beach. That's obviously the one they're trying to push. Um, you've got Quail Hollow, which is also a big name, Hillcrest. Um, but then you've got a lot of other golf clubs that are just not, I mean, I've never heard of a lot of them. Uh, Innisbrook, that's a good one. But then there's a lot of other, Kissing Tree, um, there's a lot of other ones that just don't really interest me at all. And obviously they've tried to bulk up their course list by getting, you know, a few big names to try and attract people and then bulk up their, their course numbers with just a lot of other courses. I'm gonna compare this directly to GS Pro because as you know, I love GS Pro. I think it's a fantastic software. I have zero affiliation with GS Pro. But what I will say is GS Pro has almost a thousand courses on its main server. If you include all the Patreon courses, it's well over a thousand courses on GS Pro. That includes practice facilities. There's uh, multiple, multiple practice facilities. You can go on any of the courses, drop the ball wherever you want. You can practice on the golf courses. Like I said, there's a thousand courses on GS Pro. If you want to get a course built on GS Pro, you can do it yourself at home. You can learn how to do it, or you can pay someone else to build a course and put it on GS Pro. If you want your home course on there, you can get it on there within a week. This way that Skytrack's doing it is a little bit different, and we've got 30 courses. It is very expensive for 30 courses. I just paid for these courses, and I paid, you had to actually pay for the essential pack and pay for the courses. It was very expensive. It was 520 Australian dollars to get access to these 30 courses. Or if you live in the States, it's 350 US dollars. So 520 Australian dollars to basically get course play. So yes, I know it's only just been released, but for that price, I expect big things. I really expect big things and I'm super keen. This is the first time I'm gonna go out there and play any of these courses and I'm gonna jump in and play Quail Hollow. So let's select that course. Let's do the front nine. We'll go stroke play. We will do putting out. I'm really keen to do that. Uh, gimmies will set at, let's go five feet. Pin position's medium. We won't do any wind. That all looks good. And we will go off the, let's go the blue tees. Now, I have zero affiliation with Skytrack. I've paid for all of this. This launch monitor was not provided by Skytrack. So, I can say whatever I want. I'm not bound by any restrictions. This is gonna be my 100% my thoughts. And I'm gonna give you an honest review, an honest feedback. I'm gonna try and be as unbiased as I can. But as you know, I love GS Pro. I have played that a lot. And so I am gonna be comparing this to GS Pro. Straight off the bat, standing on the first tee, I'm gonna do a flyover. So straight away, the graphics look pretty good. I mean, they don't look bad. Um, it's definitely, it's nowhere near GS Pro though. And for anyone to say that these graphics are anywhere close to GS Pro is that they're, they're wrong. Um, yeah, they're just wrong. The detail in the grass is nowhere near GS Pro. The shadows look really good. I do like that, but you're not getting anywhere near the detail you do in GS Pro on Ultra. And I will in another video, do a complete side-by-side -side comparison to GS Pro. I'll use Quail Hollow because uh, GS Pro has Quail Hollow on there. But to me, this is just, it's really good. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not as good as GS Pro. And I just want to be completely clear when I say that. Okay, first hole 
It is a dogleg right. Let's hit a driver down there. Oh, that was a stiff swing. Good draw back. Come on, draw. Just had enough to hopefully get it around the corner and have a shot to the green. And even that, the, the grass just, it looks okay, but it just, it's nowhere near the detail of GS Pro. It almost reminds me, if you load up GS Pro in light mode, which is their least graphics intense version, it kind of reminds me of GS Pro Lite. Okay, we've got 219 yards. We are downhill to the green. Let's put on the grid. I do like that, that's really good. So that is a nice functionality. You can zoom out. That's actually really nice. We'll close that. So we've got 219 yards downhill, 20 feet. So essentially 212 yards to the pin. I can't see any terrain penalties. So I don't think there are any terrain penalties and I can't see any slope either. So GS Pro does have slope. So, um, you know, left and right, up and down. I don't see any slope and I don't see any terrain penalties. So I'm just gonna assume that it's playing, you know, the same across all types of uh, grass, whether it be rough, semi-rough, like I mean, all the fairway. I'm gonna hit a five iron. Um, I will try and play a little bit of a fade. Oh, I drew that. That's gonna be left. Not a bad shot, it just wasn't a fade. Sit. Okay, really nice shot there though. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. We're on the green, 25 feet, 11 inches. This is what I wanted to test. We are putting. This is exciting. Um, I'm gonna see putting for the first time with the SkyTrack. And you know how I am with my putting. I am very aware of horizontal launch angle and I'm very aware of ball speeds. So we have 26 feet uphill, six inches, just on the greens. So I'll go into the menu. We are in putting mode now. I cannot see anywhere to adjust green speed. So I don't really know the stimp of these greens. I'm gonna assume they're slow. This is uphill. It's right to left, and then a little bit left to right at the end. So let's aim there. One thing that annoys me is, and I have spoken about this, having to hit from that red dot. I just don't like that. I wish it was a window like any other photometric based launch monitor. You get an area you can put your ball in. I, I don't like having to putt from the same location that I hit. Let's play this about 35 feet as a feel for me. That was a really nice putt. Okay, that's gone nowhere. I mean, I smashed that. Eight miles an hour ball speed. How has that only gone that far? Let me compare that. So GS Pro on, on Stimp 10 on GS Pro, eight miles an hour ball speed is 30 feet. So that's gone absolutely, that was like putting through mud. All right, let's um, 12 feet now. I'll try and hit this one a little bit harder. I'll hit this as if it's a 25 foot feel then. This is like playing Stimp 4. I smashed that. Okay, that has gone nowhere and it came off dead right. How is that five degrees right? That's completely wrong. So that one there, I mean, it was short as well. I smashed that. But the thing that concerns me is the horizontal launch angle. There is no way that I've hit that five degrees right. Absolutely no way. I wish there was a putting green on this software. I just wanna to go to a putting green and I wanna hit some putts or I wanna go hit some chip shots there's, there needs to be a chipping green and a putting green, but man, that was uh, five degrees right. I've never seen that. Not even with the GC2. The GC2 was, the worst I saw was about three degrees left or right. Okay, uh, we have the second hole. You can expand this. So that is a really nice feature in this mini map, hitting this little um, button there and it expands it and opens it up and then you can aim within that. And uh, I do actually really like that. We're gonna aim just there. So that looks good. Try and hit a good drive. So straight off the bat, I've got to say with putting, I'm not impressed so far. Um, green speeds, I mean, these are 
so slow, like seriously slow. But that was the first hole, so it might get better. Okay, should be fine. Lovely drive, sit soft. Just gonna be in the rough, but there's no terrain penalty anyway, so that's fine. And yeah, all of that data looks good. Happy with that. Okay, so we got 122 uphill 15. We'll go check out the green. I do like that, that's actually really nice. So it's gonna play about 127. So let's hit a little three quarter pitching wedge. Oh, it's gonna have to go. Get up. Wasn't the cleanest of strikes. Just on the green. Not a bad shot, to be fair. I think on the full swings, I have no issues with the data on the full swings. Okay, that leaves me 13 feet now, a little bit right to left. Actually, it's severely right to left. I'm super keen to see how this uh, horizontal launch angle is. We'll go a little bit less, that looks good. The graphics are, are good. It's definitely better than Awesome Golf, which is an iPad app. I'm gonna say it's better than Awesome Golf, but it is nowhere near GS Pro. It's nowhere near TrackMan. It's definitely a tier below those. I would say this is, this is good, but it's nowhere near those top two. 17 feet, I'm gonna try and hit this about 27 feet as a feel. Okay, hit that hard. I can't believe how slow these greens are. Two degrees right as well. So ball speed seven, ball speed of seven on Stimp 10 on GS Pro, that's going 24 feet. So these must be like Stimp six or something. They've gotta be seriously slow. Okay, onto the third hole. We have a par four. This is a long hole. It's a tough hole off the back tees. We are playing it off the forward tees today. And I can hear people watching this video just screaming at me. I will compare this with GS Pro. I'll compare this with GS Pro and the iMini Lite. I'll do a full comparison video, what you get for your money. Trust me, stand down. I will, I will be doing a full comparison. This is just my experience with this application, with this unit, and I'm being unbiased. This is completely unbiased. And like I said, I bought the iMini with my own money. I bought GS Pro with my own money. The SkyTrack, someone in Adelaide loaned it to me, but I bought the software with my own money. So this is just me in my simulator playing and just talking about my experience using this unit and this software. But I will be doing a full comparison. Go on, chase down there. Kick left. I mean, it's not bad. It is definitely not bad. The experience you get with full shots is really good. I think, you know, apart from having a hit from that red dot, the data is, is good with this thing on full shots. Okay, 128. Green slopes a little bit right to left. I can't aim in this view, that's annoying. I'd love to be able to just aim in that view. 128, and I can't use the arrow keys as well, you've got to click. So let's just try and hit a gap wedge. There's no lie penalty. See in GS Pro, this would be, the spin would get affected because you're in the rough, but this doesn't have that. So it's essentially hitting at a fairway. Be good. Oh, a little bit short. Not too bad. 18 feet below the hole. Uh, that carried 123, so yeah, that's, I mean, that to me, that's good. That's good data. Okay, 19 feet now up the hill. So I'm gonna have to play this like it's, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna have to hit this like it's 35 feet or something. Absolutely smashed it, but it was a really nice putt. Just left. I got the speed right. What was the HLA? Two degrees left. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. Okay, on to the next hole. 
I might have to just spend five minutes just doing some putting on a, on one of the greens and just hit multiple putts. Fourth hole, 162 yards, four feet downhill. So I'm just gonna hit an eight on. Should be good. Come on. Lovely shot. Five feet, 11 inches. Again, like all of that data looks good. What I'll start doing uh, on the last few holes is I'll start missing a few greens on purpose and I'll start hitting some chip shots and then I'll also hit a number of putts on a green because I really want to get a good feel for how the unit picks up putting and chipping. There's no putting and chipping green that you can go to, so I'm just going to have to do it on the course. Okay, six feet. That was a perfect roll and I smashed it. Oh, you're kidding. What was the H? See, two degrees right, I'm just, that to me was not two degrees right. That was a perfect roll. So I had to hit that a 14 foot feel on Stimp 10 in GS Pro to just get it to go five, six feet. That's mad. So it's almost double. That's, I mean, you're, you're playing Stimp 5, essentially. All right, fifth hole. Let's expand this little view. 297 to carry those bunkers. That's, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Let's just try and hit one down the middle. Oh, don't fade. It's gonna be in that bunker. Okay, that's fine. See, even the bunkers, they don't look as nice as GS Pro. They're not bad, but there's no comparison. There is no comparison. And to say that this looks better than GS Pro, you no, that's incorrect. 144 now. This is a tough yardage. I'm gonna hit, you know what? Let's hit a chip, let's hit a pitching wedge. This will be short of the green because I do want to check the chipping and pitching. So let's just hit it out there. So let's hit it um, 118, roughly. Should be about that. Sit. Okay, cool. Let's hit a little chip shot. So we've got 21 yards. I've got to remember that slope isn't taken into account. So 21 yards. Let's try and land this about 18. I'll try and play a little bit higher. Should be perfect. Okay, wasn't bad. Um, it definitely came off right, slightly right. Carry 22 yards. Okay, this will give us a good chance to test out putting again. Now, the reason I'm aiming in the software is because I actually really want to check the horizontal launch angle of this unit and whether it can read the HLA correctly. One of the biggest things with, well, the biggest thing with putting is actually starting your ball on your intended line. Speed, horizontal launch angle, and being able to read greens are the three things that are gonna make you a good putter. So if you're doing putting with a unit that can't read horizontal launch angle correctly, you're doing yourself a disservice and there's, there's honestly no point. Okay, 12 feet down the hill. I mean, I'm gonna have to hit this probably about a 20 foot feel. That was a perfect strike. It's like putting through mud, honestly. Three degrees right. Okay, so I've played five holes now and I can just say the horizontal launch angle on putting with this unit, I wouldn't trust it. Um, if I was gonna use this, I'd, I'd do auto putt, but we will persevere. Okay, we're on the sixth hole. 222 yard par three. And look at that, the front of the green, everything just funnels down. It's about eight yards downhill. So 214, so I'm gonna hit a five iron because I just carried it about that distance on the first hole. Oh no, I left it open. That was not a good swing. That's legit. I left the face open. Uh, not a good swing, but it's good because we're going to get to test out chipping again. 27 yards. Um, everything's going to break. 
right to left when it hits the green. So let's try and carry this about 20 yards then as a feel. Pretty good. I mean, that wasn't bad. That was legit. That felt exactly the data I'm seeing felt like it, what I did. Carried 18 yards. All of that looks good. Okay, let's putt through some mud. And I know I'm aimed perfectly straight. I've got the unit perfectly parallel. So everything's, I've lined this up completely. I know my line on my ball is going directly to where I, I want to aim it. So let's hit a putt. We'll try and play this what? Let's go 20 feet as a feel. If that says it came off left. Okay, it came off center. That was good. That felt like a good part. It felt like a perfect roll like the other ones did. That one said center um, for whatever reason. The others were a little off. Okay, seventh hole, par five. I might on this green just do some putts. Let's, uh, we'll try and hit this green in two and then we'll just have a putt on the green. Okay, should be down the middle. Invalid spin. Okay, we shall go again. Should be good. Chase down there. Lovely, it's gonna be 177 in. I keep wanting to hit the J key. Let's go to green. We will aim a little bit left on this one. I'm gonna aim left, try and use that slope, but I also wanna hit some putts. So we'll hit a seven iron, get it on the green, and then we'll do four or five putts. That was flush. Really nice swing there. Lovely shot. Okay, 22 feet to the hole. Good data there, that was a really nice shot. Happy with that. Let's hit some putts. I'm gonna aim way left because I just wanna check this horizontal launch angle. So let's try and hit a 10 foot putt as a feel. I don't like these uh, rectangles as well. I, I much prefer the dots that GS Pro uses. Okay, that is perfectly straight. Let's just try and hit it 10 feet as a feel. Okay, that was a perfect putt. Dead straight. Okay, that was center. So that was actually good. Let's go again. I will again try and hit it 10 feet in my sim room. Okay. What happened there? Seven degrees right. What? Let me pull up that data. <laughs> like, that literally, seven degrees right, that went nowhere. And 11 degrees launch. Let me check we're in putting mode. We are in putting mode. That was a complete misread. Let's do another one. Um, I'll aim down the hill. Let's just aim there. I'm gonna have to do a separate putting test. Okay, 10 feet as a feel. Perfect putt. It did the same thing, it went like a foot. 10 degrees launch and three degrees right. That is completely incorrect. Maybe that's why the greens are so slow because they want you to hit it harder. All right, 15 feet, let's try and get this in the gimme circle. Not impressed with putting if I'm honest. So this one I'm gonna have to try and hit like a 30 foot putt, which is just completely wrong for your feels. I'll smash that. And it's only gone. See, that is just crazy. I hit that so hard. Two degrees left. So nine, that one there, I hit nine miles an hour in GS Pro is a 40 foot putt and that's on Stimp 10. And I believe the Stimps on GS Pro to be correct. Let's, uh, we are in putting mode. Let's see if we can knock this in, nine feet. What? 
How did that go afoot? It's because it's reading vertical launch. Like what? And three degrees right. What is going on? That's, um, yeah, not impressed with putting. Not impressed with putting, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, maybe that's a, a software fix they need to take out that vertical launch because that's completely wrong. For the record, my vertical launch with my putter is about a degree. I've done a lot of testing on a lot of really good equipment. It's about a degree, a degree to two degrees anywhere in there. It is definitely not nine degrees, 10 degrees. On to the eighth hole, a short par four. Let's hit a good drive. Now I really want to test out the chipping actually a bit more. Uh, I thought that was going to be good. Leaking right on me. Felt like a decent drive if I'm honest. Okay. Oh, well, I was saying it was three degrees right. Didn't feel like a bad drive, but to be honest, this launch monitor, I personally feel on full swings, this launch monitor is seriously accurate. I, I can't fault the accuracy on full swings. 71 yards. We'll take lob wedge. We'll throw it up there. Hopefully we don't hit that tree. Actually, what I might do, let's do some chip shots. Let's hit out to the fairway. So this one will be a pit shot. I'll try and carry it about 40 yards. Really nice shot. Okay, that one looked like it came out way right. Three degrees right. I'm questioning that because that hit the center of my screen. Let's do um, some more chip shots. So I'll hit this one just out there. So we'll go 22 yards and then we can chip it onto the green. Sit. Oh no. Hit it too far. That one went miles. All of that data though looks pretty good. And we'll just put this one off. There we go. And then we can chip it. Three degrees right, come on. I don't trust this thing with putting. Okay, let's do a six foot chip shot and we'll see if it registers it. That was six foot carry and it did but it's saying it was four degrees right. There is no way that was four degrees right. It just wasn't. That is, um, yeah. Can I do a mulligan? Let's just see if I can do a few shots from there. We can, perfect. Let's do a mulligan. We'll go again, six foot carry. We'll go dead straight, center of the screen. That was dead straight. And it's come off right. Three degrees right. It just wasn't. Let me do one more of those. So the center line of my screen, we'll put that right in the middle where that ball is. That was left of it, if anything. I mean, that hit the left edge of that golf ball and it's come off three degrees right. Honestly, that uh, that's not good. My old GC2 was better than that. All right, 23 feet uphill. I'll just hit that about 40 feet, I reckon. And <laughs> it's only gone that far. There's no way. And two degrees left. Nine ball speed. I mean, that's 36 feet. Onto the ninth hole, par four, 433. Nice drive there. Stay in the fairway. Just in the semi-rough, that is gonna be fine. 124, 11 feet uphill. So I'm gonna play at about 128-ish. It's gonna be left to right when it hits the green. So we'll aim slightly left and we'll just hit a three-quarter pitching wedge. This should be perfect. Be good, come on. Lovely shot. Okay, let's see if we can make a birdie. Oh, this is our biggest chance so far. We're going right edge, nine feet down the hill. Perfect putt, 
What? How is that possible? Six degrees right? Uh, that is just so bad. That is so bad. Okay, now we have six feet. That was a little bit right. Oh, we made it. Nice, that was a par. Okay, very, very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, that's nine holes at Quail Hollow. Some very interesting results there. I'm gonna have to do a lot more testing, I think. Straight off the bat though, I will say, the graphics, they're nice. They're a step up from Awesome Golf. That's what I'll say. They're a step up from Awesome Golf. They're, for me, probably equivalent to GS Pro Lite. And I will be doing a full comparison between GS Pro and the Skytrax courses. But to be honest, it's there's gonna be no comparison. Once you see the, the two side by side, I think you'll agree. All right, guys, that is my first look at the Skytrack PC version and also a look at the course play. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. Any comments or questions, leave them down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.